So this is a 2001 Civic, but it's essentially the same. 2001 to 2005. We're gonna show you how to change it over to electric power steering, which means we're gonna get rid of the pump and all the lines, and of course the drag on the motor, which is surprisingly high. Honda claimed 3%. <laughs> And free up a little bit of squeak so some of the parts you're going to need is obviously the complete electric power steering rack and any hardware that you can get off the same car ep3 again 2001 to 2005 like the ep3 we did the k24 in that's the stuff you're going to need yeah all the brackets are actually specific to the electric rack so you're going to have all your brackets come off that same car you're gonna to wanna to pull as much as you can related to this, obviously all the mounting hardware like this. And then this part right here is the electrical portion that's gonna go into the fuse box. And that car has EPS marked. So that will fit in there, you can plug into it. So it's as close to factory install as possible. And you can get all this from a 2002 to 2005 Civic Hatchback EP3, the SI, or a 2003 to 2005 Honda Civic Hybrid, also has the same stuff. But you do need to make sure you get all your rack brackets off that car. The electrical portion of the things are right here. This was all pulled from the same donor. He had to cut the wires to be able to get it out of the car, which essentially is this part right here and this. And now we're adding the power wire. But we'll show you what pins you need. This is obviously going to bolt in. Obviously these will plug in, but we'll show you what you need to do, what you need to supply to make this thing work. And one less thing in the car. Like I said, it does have, if you look in your fuse box, it says EPS in the bottom corner. And you can see it's just a bare spot in the fuse box. So it's connected here electrically. And then this is the end that you're gonna have to add to it. But the plug, the hole is on the bottom. So the rack should have plenty of room to come out. Nice thing about the rack being high, once you move this arm out of the way, the whole thing should come out of this hole. So you can see how much fluid is being coming inside the car. Now this comes behind the carpet and then saturates the carpet. As you see, it's been leaking for quite a while. You can see on the firewall there where it's been leaking out the rack, it's been coming from here and leaking under the carpet, just making a big mess. See there, it's been leaking down the front side too. It's been making a lot of mess. This is the old wreck right here. And this is where it was leaking. It was all the way up this shaft here, but it was making a mess pretty much everywhere. So this is the electric motor off the power steering rack. Makes sense to remove that to install the rack. Makes it a little bit easier, a bit more room. There's the new electric rack installed. That's where the motor would go. There it is, it installs just like the hydraulic rack. So the wiring comes through the same hole as it would on an EP3. That's put through from the inside to the outside. The grommet is gonna be cut and made to work with the wiring, so it's a nice tight fit, tight seal. Take the wiring up, loom it. The Civic 2002 to 2005 SI is the system that we're using. You see what it looks like in here. We just did the K24 in this car. It's in a past video, but it looks the same, and it's gonna look the same in the seventh gen coupe, of course, the K20 and K24 will fit in there and work just the same way. So it's definitely a good modification for the future that doesn't have to be changed when the next engine goes out. We decided to swap cars on the way back to the cabin. So Jeff is driving the CRX, I'm driving his K24 EP3. So the first thing I notice about this thing, the power steering is such a beautiful thing. After the CRX, it has obviously no power steering, but it has a different rack, which changes the ratio of the rack. So it makes the steering really stiff. So in the factory box, this spot is here and on the back of the lid, it does say uh, EPS. So that's exactly what this is for. The only thing you'll have to add, if you can, there's a little square nut that goes underneath there and it'll actually snap into the factory fuse holder. So you've got to take this whole thing apart, push the nut in, snap it back together. And then you put the screw in and you've got a wire on the bottom. Put the nut certs in, but there was a hole in the floor where I put the nut certs. So it looks like it belongs where the EP3 one goes. But then yeah, everything else is plugged in. The ground is over here in the center. I'm adding this plug here to the ECU wires to get the proper signals for the box. I'll put that info 
here in a minute, but there's yeah. a few pieces that you got to tap into to get various signals to that box. Yeah, you need RPM so that the box knows it's on, an ignition signal to turn the box on, and a VSS so it knows how much to assist. And I have all those wires and diagrams wrote down up there. They are 4 and 01 to 03 Civic EX, which might be the same as yours, but I don't know that for a fact. All right, is everything clear under here? Nothing in the way. Do you have the air temp sensor plugged in? You got the intake completely off. Yeah, the, the sensor stays plugged in. Okay, good. Okay, the belt will probably squeak, but so long as all this works, we can put a new belt on and uh, eliminate the squeak. Because the belt's probably being saturated from oil all this yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <Powder> steering. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's it. You're joining the EV Nation. Yep. That is fantastic. So let's have a look, see how much cleaner it is. Like I said, the squeak is still coming from this belt getting saturated. But now no pump, no lines, no hydraulic fluid. Civic is just getting better and better. There it is. There's the electronic rack back there. All the wiring looks factory because it's pretty much in the factory spot. Clips are the factory brackets. So hopefully that helps you. We'll do a little bit more update on this as it gets it put back together. But we'll put as much information in the description as possible. You've been on this pretty much. I mean, this is kind of figuring it out as you go and looking at wiring. But yeah, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I'm just pulling a rack out, putting it in, and I mean, never done it before. So yeah. So hopefully we'll save you some headache by showing you what you need, where everything is and pretty much a day's worth of labor and you should be good to go. Nice thing is, that all fits in there. It's all taped, wire loomed, uses the factory grommet. So you're not gonna worry about wires rubbing. Yeah, I mean, and that's as close well it to it. Yeah, it's close to its factory. Like it fits around everything and like electric power steering wasn't a thing in 2001. No, they seem to think that they might have had it. So they're ready for it. Yeah. Next thing is, is to replace that bell so it doesn't squeak cold. Gonna need an alignment too. Yeah, wow. Well, so now that everything's it. done, I can actually do it. Yeah. Now you got so much more room to do it too. Yeah. Sweet. How is it? That's great. The maintenance required I haven't reset. That's just because of the mileage. Look at the mileage. The 284, 770. Look at that. 284, 284,000 miles. As soon as it hits 300. We're gonna get somebody to sponsor you a K motor. The sooner the better. <laughs> no, we're gonna hit 300. Yeah, I know, I'd like to. You gotta see the Magic 300. What else, what have you acquired? I mean, right now, I've got uh, a six speed. I lucked into a six speed. I got a, an actual engine uh, and most of the accessories. I still need subframe, axles, mounts, computer, wiring harness the major parts really yeah well you got the motor and you've got a broken six speed so if somebody has even a six speed or a five speed and they want to donate it we'll of course show you how to put it in you have a motor but if somebody has a better motor we'll take that too again we're not bagging for parts but if somebody wants to give us stuff of course we'll, we'll do it and share it with you show you what's going on and how you got to do it but this car would be great with a k24 and a manual conversion but 284,000 miles just shows you how good hondas are I mean, it really does. We're a Honda shop, but they really are that good. Sweet. All right. See you in the next video. Hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, hit the subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share it, like it, do all of that weird stuff. We'll see you in the next video.